In a world wrought with devastation, two unite into one to form a superior combination. One white, one black. This is their story of the anime aspect. Hey everybody, welcome back to the anime aspect. I am Matt Swagger. And with me, he's trying to get his anime dick wet, none other than Brave Dave. Yo! Thanks for tuning in. This is episode three. Last week, we were talking about three animes that Dave watched. He was watching Bleach, the first episode, Full Metal Alchemist, the original series, and Naruto. So, Matt, I got some bad news. I did not do my homework this week. You did not do your homework? Nah, man. Every time I turned on the computer, I just instantly went to porn. Oh. And I just didn't make it in time to, uh, you know, get in some anime. Hey, man. Um, I'm a little disappointed, but not. let's just get on with it, and we'll just talk about... But for next week, I'll definitely have the Yeah, that'll done. be something for next week, but I think we have something a little bit more important to talk about than reviewing... Oh, you mean the feedback that you got from uh, not liking One Punch Man? Uh, yeah, I. you know, this is the thing. Yeah, I made some comments last episode about how I wasn't blown away and taken back and just my toes didn't curl up with excitement for One Punch Man. And a lot of you know people were giving me shit saying that, you know, you just a Dragon Ball Z fanboy, all you care about is Goku, and it's, it seems like it's, I'm talking to between the age range of 10 to 15 years old. You know, again, like I said last episode, you can't, like every single show, just like an American show, anything. I'm sure people don't, many people don't like Broadway plays or musicals or, you know, sitting through a show that makes no sense. I, to me, it's very mundane, it's very paper, very cardboard. I think the show's kind of lifeless, yeah. but I don't hate it. I don't it. hate it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I it, can't say I love it either. For me, it's, it's like a Walmart version of Dragon Ball Z. It's, you got a guy that didn't really put much effort, but I guess in to, in that show's world, he did a major training to become this powerful guy. He lost his hair. When Goku trains and becomes more powerful, he gets more hair. I don't even I don't understand. Goku does a hell of a lot more training and puts in a lot more work than Saitama did in his show. So for people to get it all crazy, like who would win in a fight, like you have all these comparisons. You have Goku versus Superman. You got Goku versus One Punch Man. You got One Punch Man versus Superman. Who would win? It, Who's you know, more powerful, Superman or Goku? In terms of strength, it would probably be Superman because of the limitless power he has from the yeah. sun, how his body takes in the radiation. But then, see, and I'm an anime fan, but I'm also a fan of American comics, I'm a fan of Superman, a fan of Batman. So I can be realistic and say, yeah, Superman is more powerful than Goku. It's not, it's not a bad thing to say. Could it be that Goku could get the upper hand in the battle and could win the fight? He could be. I'm just saying that he's not as strong as Superman, even though he's on God level status in the show. See, the thing is, these are different worlds, different countries different studios you're never gonna know unless these studios come together and do an actual crossover which would be amazing crossovers really are meaningless yeah because they're not canon and it's right. really not gonna mean anything because a right. fan could do the same thing like they've done right. i've seen an awesome illustration done like in a flip book style of goku versus superman right. and i don't think it had a clear winner because the two are overly powerful and it's just leave it to your imagination that's all I can say. If you're a fan of something, I'm happy you're a fan, you're passionate about something. This is what anime is all about. This is what the show is about, to bring awareness to people that don't know what anime is. And it's it's a share of passion for people that do watch anime, like myself and other otaku and everybody that's into this. And, you know, for Brave Dave, he's someone that's trying to get his dick wet again, trying to watch it more often, getting a feel for it, understanding it more. So this is what the show is about. And if there's going to be a little negative feedback for honesty, you know, it's 2016. You got to understand that people are allowed to speak their mind. Everyone's not going to be a fan of everything. But just know that I'm not hating on anything. I'm your ambassador here in America. 
trying to educate on the differences between the different animes and what I think is a standout anime and what's just fluff. All right. Other uh, controversial topics that we have to get to today. Yeah. Um, um, Hollywood, you know, in the last, man, it's about to be, what, 20 years since Blade? Yeah. Yeah. About wow. Two, year, two years away. You know, mm-hmm. uh, since. Wesley Snipes don't look a day older either. No, nah, it looks good. Black don't crack. That's, I was just going to say it. Hollywood adaptions of comics, video games, is nothing new, right? Uh, you know, Batman, we had Batman 89. Yeah. Before that, we had the Batman Adam West TV series. Yeah. Um, we had the Wonder Woman TV series. We had the Incredible Hulk TV series. We had a Spider-Man TV series with Nicholas Hammond. There was a Flash TV series in the early 90s before the one that came out, you know, two years ago. Yeah. With John Wesley Ship, right? Right. The great... Yeah, John man. wants to ship. Damn straight. Um, but, alright, so, again, Hollywood adaptions of comic books, video games, whatever, uh, cartoons, is nothing new. No. Uh, in terms of when these things really start becoming profitable, I think, uh, I mean, outside of Batman 89, you know, because Blade was not really meant to be a hit, in a sense. Like, um, they didn't even want to advertise it as a comic. Yeah, they because that stigma at the time, right? Because that was right off the the Batman movies, yeah, um, with the Schwarzenegger and, and you know that was what Batman and Robin, uh, yeah. yeah, that was Batman and Robin, right? So that was pretty terrible. Yes. So uh, Blade, it, it did okay in theaters, but it did amazing on DVD, and that was when DVD was like a new thing. Uh-huh. Uh So since then, you know, Hollywood made things like X Men, Spider Man, and you know. And that was also the rise of the in- internet culture. So, um, in ter- I mean, in terms of, like, fanboys' uh, uh, responses to what they think about the movie, the casting, all these different things, right? Yeah. So, now we're at a point where Hollywood is almost 20 years, like, almost tits deep in making, you know, <laughs> fucking, you superhero know, superhero movies or whatever. Now, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> You know, they've tried adapting video games time and time again. It never seems to work out. No. The How about uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie? Oh, God. That was, you know... Well, remember, there was a Super Mario's movie and also the Double Dragon movie. Yeah. From the early 90s with uh, Scott Wolf and Mark Dukakis. Yeah. And the beautiful and talented Alyssa Milano oh, from... Oh, baby. You know, who's the boss? She is. Um, but anyway, but the, the video games don't seem to be working. I think the last investment is going to be uh assassin's creed a lot of people are kind of waiting to see what happens with let's that, see right? what happens i'm interested right so now hollywood is also turning their heads to anime anime of, what a surprise and what is this show about anime um <laughs> no oh uh, so as an otaku as yourself yeah mr uh swagger swagger yes is it anime or anime it's anime 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 but it's still naruto right Nah, man that's not at all oh, okay i tried i tried anyway <laughs> so all right so this naruto is kind of, of a sushi roll no is it i don't know oh, man. <laughs> i think naruto is a type of ramen which is oh, okay. <laughs> uh and he likes noodles. ramen yeah in, that's in the, the whole yeah, pun yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. gotcha gotcha <laughs> ah aha uh-huh. well, i see i teach as well as teach. entertain so anyway um <laughs> All right, so um, the last few years, there's been a lot of rumors about Hollywood wanting to adapt some of the more popular anime movies and TV series yeah, and blah, 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 They're blah. trying to get their hands on the franchise rights because they want to milk the cow. They know that this is well, extremely popular, but... Hollywood's a business. Exactly, and they want to make money. Right, but it's a business. This, um, is, this is where the line gets blurred, though. Now, before we get into Ghost in the Shell, which has been the latest controversy. Yes. I want to start with Akira. Okay. Because if you go back about three or four years, there was a lot of controversy surrounding Akira. Yeah. Um, I forgot the filmmakers that were involved at the time, but um, they wanted to adapt Akira. They wanted to whitewash it. They wanted to bring the roots from Japan to America. So I think what they were going to try to do was make it more of like a post 9-11 story. Ugh. 
and I was hearing rumors of people like Zac Efron being considered. And, oh, God. And, and it got to a point where, like, George Takai had to come out and, you know, beg Hollywood not to whitewash this property. <laughs> and it was like, where the hell did George Takai just come from? Like, And, you know, yeah. speaking of him, he just came out recently about, with the new Star Trek movie, yeah. how his character is being, you know, portrayed as gay. Right. And his character, when he was playing it was not right, his personal straight, yeah. yes his his personal life he's gay right so i don't know if that's a way of paying homage to him or they're just lazy trying to f- you know trying to make something new that's old right. but he spoke out against it to please not make that character be gay because right. sulu was straight guy right you know and i i f- i feel what he's saying and that's it's a touchy subject, you know. Man. Yeah, but um, just because you brought him up, I figured right. I would add that. Hey, uh, hey, hey, I didn't say that because I'm afraid to touch on you know uh, touchy topics. No, I'm, I'm saying because you brought up his is. name, so I figured right, that's yeah. relevant in, in what's it going is, on right but now. But it is, it is. It, it's all about it's 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 relative because it's all about representation, right? That's yeah. what we're talking about here. It's all about being original. Now, you know, George Takai again. He came out and 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 he begged Hollywood, please do not whitewash the story. Yeah. So a lot of anime was inspired by the culture. You know, after the H bomb, yeah. that changed their entire culture forever. Oh um, yeah, that <laughs> that woke so them up. <laughs> there's a reason why a lot of anime has a lot of like post apocalyptic yeah. feel and yeah, absolutely. Ab- yeah, it's all that's, based on that shit. That's um, that's what they experienced in their life, right? So, for someone who is a big anime fan as yourself, yeah, how do you feel when Hollywood comes along and says, "Okay, we want to adapt this story, and we're going to make some changes"? And by some changes, we mean big changes. And that because means everything changes. Let's bring an example when they adapted Dragon Ball. God, that was terrible. That was a. I I can't even get words out to right. express my disgust over that was pretty disgusting it was it was the portrayal like of that show the movie rather it's god awful <laughs> goku an 18 year old teenager in high school uh, piccolo looking like i don't even know I, it, I can't it was a mess it was you got <laughs> you see i can't it's let's oh. like, take that as my my feeling for when these American studios want to take something sacred and right. desecrate it. Well, here's my thing. Because um, I actually, I, I totally forgot about the, the Dragon Ball oh. um, movie. That's something you should just CGI, man. You, you really can live adapt that. But I know you say you can make a live adaptation about everything. I know that you're about to say it. You could. I you know. Could. If you want to do a Dragon Ball Z movie... It, it has to be epic. It has to be on the scale yeah. of, like, a Lord of the Rings, that yes. kind of thing. Like, you need, like, like real talented directors and just sp- creative voices involved in a project. And you you got to build off what is already laid out for you. You have the foundation. Just stick with it. That's what made it so popular in the first place. Right. That's what kills me with, when they take these shows, they buy the rights, and then they just fuck it up. You, you have... My take on this is, yes, many of the characters in anime don't look Asian. They don't. And it's very hard to pick someone that will represent them in the right way. And being a fan of anime and its Japanese culture, and a lot of you will be like, well, it should be an Asian person portraying it. I totally agree if that character is represented as looking Asian. But most of the characters... They're very ambiguous. You really can't tell what race, what demographic they are. Sometimes you can't even tell if it's a man or a woman. So it's... But If you're going to deem it whitewashing, if it's going to be an all-white cast, that's wrong. If like, Because anime is very diverse. It doesn't have to be an Asian person, a whole Asian cast. It can have Asians. It can have whites. It can have Hispanic. It can have African-American, right. Indian, whatever. Just to make it diverse like it is in the show's but the person portraying the characters should closely resemble, should have the acting chops to live up to that character so they can properly portray them on screen and do right by the fans. All right, so with that being said, 
the topic of the day is obviously whitewashing. Yeah. Um, now, there's a lot to get into with that kind of shit, right? You brought it up, and I totally agree. The biggest problem with anime, the central characters... Actually, just every character, the aesthetic design, they all look European. Just about. Except for Yajirobe, man. He's the only Asian-looking dude. Besides maybe Krillin looks like a Chinese monk. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with the studio or anything like that. Um, Because with anime, I'm kind of on the outside looking in. Yeah. I'm not an official otaku yet. But I do know how I feel as a hardcore comic book fan. Yeah. When... I, when they cast a certain actor who I feel does not look anything like the character from the book, yeah. or they make these severe changes, or I'm just like, wait, but that doesn't make sense. Or, well, like for example, or, one Ezra Miller portraying Barry Allen in the, the Flash, is, yeah, the it doesn't that? make sense. Yeah. But it looks we, more like a hipster. Yeah, but you know the thing behind that mustache. He was doing he was doing another movie at the time. He couldn't shave or cut his hair, mm. and I guess it's in respects to that for him he couldn't help that so right. they had a film that way before they were doing the movie because yeah. he was tied into whatever movie at the time he was doing yeah. but he cut his hair since and shaved to portray more like Barry Allen but right. still I'm more of a, fan, a Grant Gustin fan I think he has the acting chops to take it to the big screen I really I'm not familiar with Ezra Miller that's, that's, those are the things we're talking about when you when studios make a decision based on looks. He has a fantastic jawline. I know that's what they're mm-hmm. trying to go for in the DC films right now. Superman, Wonder Woman, Ben Affleck, and Ezra Miller's jawline can go, you know, it can be like the horizon when you're at the beach. It's it, <laughs> They're going off for aesthetics. They're going for what's going to sell sexually and... Well, I mean, there, but, there's, see, but there's a lot involved. I mean, and there, there's so many different factors here. Here, okay... Here's what it comes down to with whitewashing. The reason why whitewashing happens is, is because they feel that in order to sell this property, this film on a global scale, one, you're going to need a familiar face, two, a recognizable name to go along with that familiar face, three, as well, white people are big consumers, right? I've been told. Um, and, but, but like, let's, let's, let's be honest, like, um, as a black man living in this country, um, and I do love my country, I appreciate my country, but let's be honest, like, other races, nationalities are not properly represented in Hollywood. No. Um, you know, a lot of these, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's kind of sad to say, but if you think about it, like. Fast and Furious has to be the most diverse cast yes. in cinema fucking history. It is. And I think that's one of the reasons why this movie, it's this franchise on. has done so well. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have Vin Diesel, who's biracial. Yep. The Rock is biracial. Yep. Michelle Rodriguez is, what, Puerto Rican or something like that. I think so. Yeah. You had, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he was the, uh, he's like a Korean actor. He was in the movies for a yeah, while. Yeah, he was cool. He was, he, was he cool. started from the second one, the no, no, no. He Tokyo started, Drift. No, that was the third one. Tokyo Drift was three. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. The second one was Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah, yeah. You had Tyrese, yeah. who was introduced in Too Fast, Too Ludacris. Furious. Ludacris. Black, Ludacris. You had... Um, you got the Dominican guys, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's uh, the, oh, the, the, the oh, singers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tego Cow Drone, something like that, or something. Like, Tego, something. I, yeah. I, I don't listen to music, but uh, you had uh, Jordana Brewster, who is, is she Brazilian? Not too sure, but she looks good. Then you had Gal Gadot, who's 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 uh, I know she yeah. She's uh, from Israel. She's hot. You had um, she is hot. Who else did you have in the movie? I mean, Paul Walker was like the blue eyed white. Yeah, guy. he was the fucking surfer yeah. boy. Well, and, and, and but look at this though. Like when you look at the franchise when it started out. Paul Walker and Vin Diesel were kind of like the face of the movie, but Paul Walker has like the the Nazi poster child look, right? Blonde hair, blue good looking, yeah. blue eyes, um, and that you know that movie became a hit. Also, look at the music that was used in that movie. Um, that soundtrack was heavily based around uh, rock, alternative rock music, yeah. with a, with a little bit of hip hop, but mostly alternative rock. Vin Diesel, his. His nationality or anything like that is never really touched on. Yeah, like you don't, you probably just think he's Italian because you know uh, uh, Dominic Toretto. Yeah, you, you, you know what I mean. Know he like, looks nothing like Italian, but 
Yeah. But I think he is, I mean, he is half Italian, half black, but I know what okay. you're saying. Yeah, he just does, um, yeah, it looks like I don't look Italian and I'm part Italian. You look more Irish. You look a little Irish. Irish. Seamus! Oh, um, <laughs> Stella! Don't worry, I'm Devon. It's okay. Uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> and I'm Bubba Ray again. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, I mean, Hollywood has always taken comfort in, you know, selling white people to the audience and it works yeah right yeah now i mean and this goes back to what we were just talking about the problem with anime has always been the aesthetic design <laughs> the aesthetic design historically yeah. was um was modeled after disney characters yeah which is why you know you the they large had eyes the large eyes and things like that but you know when people think about asians you don't think about them having large eyes no you yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's yes, it's. The and I'm opposite. not trying to be. And I'm not. I'm not, not, not saying all. this to be insensitive. No, I'm being it, honest. Like the facial characteristics are much different. Right. So it's going. That's why I guess Hollywood feels like they can sell this in America because the characters don't portray Asian people. Right. So they figure that all right, this is a good market. We can just yeah. buy the rights. We can all right, but they all have Japanese names. Right. So they do. I mean, that's the thing. You got right. the Japanese names, but they look like they're white right. or European, right. or you really can't tell sometimes. Think about this, right? During the war, Japan had a close relationship with uh, Germany, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Full Metal Alchemist. Where is that based off? Of? Isn't that like Full Metal Alchemist is like a German, German? type of. Yeah. It's very Westernized right. anime. Especially the the first adaptation is very so, like, heavily let, influenced about let's think about that, Germany right? Nazi the World War Two. Right. Right. Um, that's one of the shows where they really don't have Japanese names. They you could right. totally make that right. into an English adaptation, live action. Right. The only character I would say that resembles Asian is Roy Mustang, and because he does have that Asian, right. you know, demographic look to him. Right. And. But other than that, you could really, you can cast this white dude as right. Edward Elric, and his name is English. Edward Elric is no Japanese name, so it's easy to put right. a white person, and because he's got blonde hair, I believe, green eyes. Well, but look at Bleach, right? Yeah. Bleach, they live, the setting is in Japan, right? Yes. I, I've only seen one episode, but what's the, the lead character's name? Ichigo. Ichigo. That's clearly Ichigo Japanese. Ichigo Kurosaki. Now, let's think about, look, uh, think about that name. Now, look at the aesthetic design of that character. That guy, that kid... 15-year-old kid. 15-year-old yeah, kid. At the time. Looks more like Zach Morris than he does a, a, a kid of Japanese descent. Yeah, so it's kind of hard if you're going to want to do an English adaptation. Right. You got this overly white-looking man with his name is Ichigo. Right. Like, how do you... Like, get, I really want to get Are you going to change his name? I, I don't know. But the thing is with me is I want to get a better understanding of why that is. is. Why they don't want... It's almost like they have the ability to represent themselves, but they choose to design all their characters after I, I truly European... think that's the style of their art. And that's what makes it so interesting is because in America, we draw people the way we see them as ourselves. Right. We really don't... You know, and so sometimes wait, are, are you saying that they see themselves as like a European looking dudes or no? I I think they're I think that they are inspired by our art, right. and that they made that their own. They are. I mean, that was again, and they, that, and it's not saying that they don't draw Asian characters. They do. It's just not as relevant. The shows that stand out are the ones that are. They just. It just looks like it's hard to explain. It's just. It's ambiguous. It's. It just characters. It's really it, it, it doesn't revolve around race and demographic and all that. That's what makes anime so great because I mean, you don't it's, you it's, don't get wrapped into this race war with what right. what should be and what's not, and that's what's beautiful. It's it's but it just you get some issues when it comes into American soil, of course, right. and when it's in Japan and we're watching it on DVD or on Crunchyroll or whatever your legitimate sources to watch anime and manga. It this is. This is what we are used to. We're just used to a great story, beautiful, stunning visuals, and characters that we fall in love with. And then when greedy American studios want to get their hands on it because it's so profitable as an anime, as a manga, they want to take it, change it, but have the same kind of outcome. But it's everything's different. But I mean, are you 
so wait, are you gonna cast a white actor and give him a Japanese name? Because that's exactly what it would be. But that's what they did in, in Dragon Ball. And wasn't he still called Goku? And he was obviously dude, white. I didn't even bother watching. Movie. I I and he, I saw the trailer. I was like, "There's no way I'm spending any money or spending any time watching this crap." <laughs> the fuck out of here. But I mean, listen, a lot of a lot of especially think about the female anim, anime characters look like Betty Boop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but Betty Boop is 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 not like a Japanese character. Was she like was she French? Uh, not not sure of because that was during the, the days of like you know Felix the Cat and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But again, but that's that's what you know a lot of that stuff inspired anime. Yeah, because when you look at the aesthetic design and and the the the, the fast, I mean the obsessiveness with the big eyes, you know. I'm I'm just gonna say some things should be just left alone, and that goes for American adaptations as well. Some things should just not be redone, like reboots. I'm tired of seeing Spider Man being rebooted. I'm tired of seeing classics being rebooted. Like I don't know what the, my what Ghostbusters now is going to be like. You know, this is this is what it is. When you have something classic, and I know why the reboots are done because they can hold on to the rights if they put something out in a certain amount of time. Usually just, about five years. Yeah, so they want to keep milking the cow. That's you know, business is business. And this is what it is. Is what it is. But some things should be left alone. Or if you're going to redo it, do it the same way, but make it better. Make it more stunning. Put better technology and put better visuals into it. Make well, it yeah, stand out to, as this is the, right. the standpoint in the generation. You, you had have this, to add something to it. You have to, but it shouldn't deviate from the source. That's the problem. And that's the problem with American companies wanted to buy Japanese properties they want to have an all-white cast, maybe one token person or two to get killed or whatever, mm-hmm. and just completely change their names because the face and the name are not going to fit, and then try to make the story the same, but make it political or make it some kind of shit fest, and it's not going to work. In terms of Akira and Ghost and Shell, I, I kind of felt you were saying two different things. Even though I agree with exactly what you're saying, on the one end you're saying that because of the design choice of the Japanese creators, it causes a conflict when these things are adapted. It yeah, right. it does. It causes the conflict right. with what what do we think is right, and not and the problem with the American studios is they just going to do what they want. Right. But as fans, we we want it to be. Japanese inspired still because that's right. where it came from even though they don't look Japanese they don't right. look Asian so, so, so it, what's it, the problem with Scarlett Johansson being was it Miracle or a Motoko Moto- I, I don't know shit see I, I'm, I, I haven't dipped my dick totally in yet so <laughs> it's not fully wet it's, it's he, just damp he just, got, he just put the tip in <laughs> the tip is damp that's just it just getting a tease uh, <laughs> no but like but, but seriously like I I'm fascinated by this kind of shit I'm fascinated by the the controversy of, of the shit you know um even even actors uh ming na she yeah. plays um may a- in agent may. Of the shield yep. you know even she's protesting um you know ghost in the show now i don't think she's protesting because she wants to play the role but she feels that a person of asian descent should be playing the role you and sh- i could see that cuz the pro- the problem is hollywood you know, they kind of recycle the same Asian actors over and over and over again. Yeah. And another thing that they do is sometimes you'll watch a show with, okay, either a show or a movie. In this movie, they're Chinese. In the next movie, they're from Thailand. In the next movie, they're Japanese. It's like they're, it's insulting. they're using Asians to be interchangeable. Yeah. That's is, kind of what Bruce Lee was. Which is wrong. Speaking about years ago. The, oh, he was so ahead of the his time. The wise yeah. sage that he was. Yeah. And... It still holds true today. That's right. why always the good get taken away. Well, look at Kung Fu. Yeah. The show Kung Fu was, <laughs> <White guy. laughs> was, I think, the idea came from Bruce Lee. He wanted to do that show. Hollywood was not confident in him at the time. Yeah. They did not want to take the risk. So what did they do? Hired they a white casted guy. a white guy. To play with, a monk. Who looks slightly Asian. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When I was growing up, during my era, it was Kung Fu, The Legend Continues. Yes. I had no idea that there was a Kung previous Fu, series. Yeah. Right. Now, here's the thing. I grew up thinking David Carradine was Asian. Yeah. 
like like he was like half and half or something like that. You know what I mean? It's a great actor, go arrest the soul and you know. Hey, he went out the best way, man. Fuck it. Damn right. But you know, again, I grew up thinking he was Asian until one day I learned that he's actually not Asian. And then even when I when I took a look at his brothers, like there's Robert Carradine who was in um Revenge of the Nerds. He played the main nerd in Revenge. That's his brother, actually. <laughs> oh my god. Um But yeah, it, it's like and then when I read about the story of Bruce Lee, I was really bothered by that. I was like, wait, so you felt it was in your best interest to get a white guy to play the lead role in a show called Kung Fu. Yeah. Very, instead of very racist, right? There, getting <laughs> a guy who's actually from that culture. And, that, and that's the problem with um, where there's been a lot of, you know, feedback. I mean, a lot of, you know, negativity surrounding things like um, uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Right? Because it's yeah. another story about, about the white man that enters the Asian world and does things better than they do, basically. He takes all their secrets. Yeah, he becomes oh, the next Sorcerer Supreme. Right. Exactly. From the ancient one was the original. Right. And the ancient one was always portrayed as an Asian. Asian. Um, Iron Fist. Yeah. Iron Fist is another example of, <laughs> of a of the, of white the, guy. Yeah. The <laughs> white guy goes into the Asian culture, does it better than they do. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's. I mean. This shit is so ridiculous. I think Marvel did a good thing by by uh, casting uh, what's her name, Tilda Sweeten, who has a very ambiguous look. She would be perfect for anime because sometimes you can't tell if it's a boy or a girl. I thought that was a smart decision. It's an ambiguous right choice, and as you want to represent someone as being an entity as right. rather as a person, right? It was a smart call. But to not offend people, people. But there but are people bothered. Still by offended the fact anyway. That, exactly. So you can't have win. a cast an Asian we're like, oh God, see, you're you're just giving us the typical roles, right? Yeah. You you, you there's <laughs> there are times where there are these no win situations. Yeah. Even in Iron Man three, they casted um uh Sir Ben, ben King, Kingsley yeah. as uh, Mandarin. Mandarin because yeah. you know, Mandarin was technically a racist character. Yes. Yeah, you he, know? but he again one of Iron Man's greatest villains. Right, a great character has a great history. He right. should have been portrayed properly. I, when I done, well, when done correctly, you it really shouldn't be no offending done right. because this is what they were in the book. Right, and then this is what they should be but, on screen. But you gotta remember, this stuff but, was created at a time where I, yeah, this is yeah, like era. Captain America was a big racist in the books too. But <laughs> you, I you, seen you, some you, shit. You know what I mean? Like calling you big yellow monkey. Get off. Oh no. <laughs> well, but, but you see, like, we ha we do have to take those things into consideration. So I can't just yeah. be like, okay, because it was in a book 40 years ago, it has to stand now. But I, but I know what you're saying. It doesn't have to be that cartoony type of shit. Right. It still could be a, a strong Asian Look, actor portraying that strong character. Right. I had no problem with Ben Kingsley being... Um, the Mandarin. The Mandarin. I thought he was great up, to, up until a point you find out he was He's just an actor. An English actor. I didn't, I didn't like that part. <laughs> yeah, playing the... I was like, what the fuck is this? Everything before that, I was okay that with. That was like a huge fucking plot twist right but, there. <laughs> but here... Okay, see, in 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 Iron Man 3, they tried to do the Batman Begins switch. Yeah. Remember with uh, Ra's al Ghul? You assumed it was going to be the Asian guy? Yeah, yeah. But it was really the white guy? Yeah. So, and um, what the creators of Iron Man 3 were trying... They were trying to do the exact same thing. It didn't have the same effect. But what they were trying to say is, though... We're so familiar with the person of color being portrayed as the villain that there are times that the guy with the white skin is actually the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy to blame an act of terrorism on the person of color. Yeah, well, right? that's what we're spoon-fed to, right. you know, to the media. Right, and that's the exact world that we live in. Yeah. Um, you know, you watch movies like the Rambo series, right? Yeah. Oh, What's the Rambo that everyone remembers? Uh, let's see it's not going to be the first one it's going to be not. the second one it's going to be the second one yeah because he's in Vietnam right <laughs> think about this in Rambo and it's not even called Rambo it's called like First Blood yeah the first right. one's called First Blood yeah it's not until the movie became until, it wasn't until they made they started making sequels and they made him more of a superhero that when they started airing the movies on TVs and, and, and printing on VHS that it was like Rambo First Blood yeah it's really just called First Blood it was but here's the thing. In in First Blood, the white people are the villains. Oh, yeah. This is a guy. It's just passing is, through. He's, he's passing through. He's considered a drifter. He fought for his country. 
Medal of Honor but, with a, a hero. Right. But what happened, right? This is what happened. There are certain people that don't want him around. Yeah. Now, so this is the man who fought for his country just to come back to have no country. That's such an important story. Yeah. But then they started making the sequels. Then Rambo became a superhero. Yeah. Who were the villains in that one? The Vietnamese. Vietnamese was in Rambo 2. And I believe in Rambo 3, it was the Arabs, I believe. And then when he did his other one when he was older, I think it was, it was Thailand? Or? It, Burma. Burma. Burma, yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, like it's like close to... It, it had two names. You got to call it Burma Myanmar. Or, or Myanmar, Myanmar yeah. yeah. But it's close to Thailand, yeah. Okay. So, you see the running theme here. It's like, why is it like... It's always going to be the, the people of color. It's playing like these terrorists, these villains. And for a person like like me, I'm like, you know what? It'll be nice to see the black guys a hero every now and then. It'll be nice to see the Asian guys a hero. We rarely see any uh, Spanish or Hispanic people being represented on screen. Unless they're like the, the sexy, sultry, like... Uh, uh, maid or servant of some sort yeah i mean listen there's a lot of problems in hollywood and how people of color are represented that's true you know and this um, this is what ties into what we're speaking about it it all ties in yeah it all ties in because the problem is you want to take a japanese story and put a bunch of white faces around it because regardless of the aesthetic design from the from the animated movie it's still Japanese in nature and Japanese, origin Japanese origin Japanese uh, nature uh, the characters everything the about culture. it is tied to the roots the culture of Japan yeah you cannot just bring this over here and say we're gonna cast Scarlett Johansson so I am against Scarlett Johansson being in that role I have nothing against her I like her as an actress she's gorgeous she's, she's a great actor she just doesn't fit the role of Moriko Right. And especially, you're going to call her Moroko Kusanagi? Right. It's offensive to me, and I'm a white right. male. Right. Born and raised in America. You know it's because, sad when the white guy's offended. Uh, <laughs> this, let me tell you, I'm very, very passionate with anime. Anime opened my eyes. It, it was a great experience to live and to grow up with it. Right. And being criticized in school for liking it and once again i apologize for uh, constantly <laughs> yeah, picking on you sure <laughs> we all know it wasn't you and uh, it been. Uh, how it just gets you through dark times and rough times and it just helps you and motivates you and it just shows you that you know there are great things out there and you just got to stay positive and when you see that messed with it's like messing with your family. It's messing with something that you love. You don't want to see something you love messed with. And this is what they're doing. Ghost in the Shell is, especially the standalone complex series, is a great anime. Moroko is a very complex, original, and great character. And for them just to say, all right, we're going to have Scarlett Johansson be the lead because she's very marketable. She's right. very well known. And she's Black Widow in the Marvel movies. So this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to, you know, just sell the movie based on her being so well into Hollywood. Right. I'm, I don't agree. And there's other choices that could closely resemble Motoko that probably could do a fantastic job. Especially when you have a name like Motoko. You can't put a white girl. Yeah. And expect it to work. And, and that's the and that's the problem. And and you know, they're and the producers are, are you know, they're trying to spin the story. Oh, like, well, you know, we're making this more of an international story. And but it But then it's not Ghost in the Shell anymore, so don't call right. it Ghost in the Shell. Just you buy the rights for it, then drop the name and just make it something and Or just, make your own shit. How exactly. About, Be creative you, you and know fucking what I mean? like, I'm tired take, of people like adapting these fucking stories and this goes for comics, animes, video games. They buy it just for the name, the brand, the ex- built in exactly. brand just to change everything. That doesn't make any fucking sense. No, and it just it's like raping. Right. You're raping the culture, you're raping the people, and you're raping the fans. Because you're just taking away everyone's innocence and their right to say no. That's basically what they're doing. Right. And this 
it has to stop. You got to be original. We say it on the Rogues Gallery all the time when we're talking about comics, talking about our superhero movies and TV shows. It's like, look, look Rebirth. Rebirth was doing, Batman did like 400,000. Yeah. That's great. It's good to see the industry getting back there because they're going back to their roots. They're doing things differently. They're being a little bit more creative. That's great. Anime's always been doing that with manga and their shows. And then when you have these studios coming in, because they have nothing else to come up with, they pay their fucking writers a shitload of money and they do nothing. But like, let's use our fucking wallet to buy something and then fuck it up and make well, it just like what we're doing here already. I, no, I you don't need that. I disagree one point. I disagree with one point. Everything else you said, I agree with. Here's the thing. There are a lot of guys in Hollywood, a lot of writers, a lot of creators who are submitting ideas. But here's the thing. Hollywood, they want to invest in built-in properties. They want to invest in something where they, they know that there's a fucking message board or a chat room where people are discussing things. Yeah. You know, they don't want to take the risk they, they, to give you an original idea. They want to buy a business that's already established. Exactly, because so. they don't want to do the work. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And that's the problem. So there are a ton of writers in Hollywood. A lot of guys who are bleeding, trying to get something made, but they can't get anything made because they're not going to get the funding. Because the, the, um, the, the guy who signs the check says, you know what, I want something that's more familiar with people. <laughs> I know, the name, the name alone. They're going to know, oh, yeah, we, we're going to do a Ghost in the Shell movie. Right. And then it turns out it's just going to be about this white girl that's running through Asian because she's being attacked by Asian people. Right. That I guarantee that's what this movie is going to be about. And it's going <laughs> to maybe have one cyborg who maybe, is it even going to be about cyborgs or androids or technology like Ghost in the Shell is all about? All right. about that espionage and the cyber attacks and right. all that political espionage. Is it going to be about that? Probably not. It's going to be about getting chased around, because that's what it looks like from one of the set photos. She's being chased, probably hunted down because she found something that she shouldn't have. And these Asian terrorists or uh, Akuza probably are going to go after her and want it back. And that's bullshit. Yakuza. And the Yakuza! And, you know, come on, man. How much can we throw around the Yakuza, the, the Japanese mob? How much can we throw around the ninjas? You know... That shit worked in Netflix Daredevil because that had that element in there. You got Iron Fist. You had that Asian element. So that worked. It fit the story. Here you're taking something that's Japanese in origin. You're making it American. And then you're using the Asian roots against it. <laughs> One of the things that I'm really bored with the American comic book industry is the fact that how many times can we read a story about... Uh, a white dude in his 20s or a teenage white dude everything is always surrounded by a white dude I'm like okay I get it you there must be literally alright so you know that Marvel <laughs> has like 5,000 characters right yeah that they don't use <laughs> how many characters do you think are white probably about 4,950 <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> you know what I mean and, and then like you, the Asian character you have is what um, not Shang Tsung uh, uh, what's <laughs> That's Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> no, um, man, it fits in. <laughs> no, um, what's the what's the Asian dude that was part of the uh, the way you call it? Fuck, he's tied into Iron Fist, and is it Shin or? Oh shit! Fuck. Wait, I know who you're talking about. Uh, can't. Yeah, we're gonna just check our resources. Yeah, hold on, bear so, with us. Um, yeah, I know that in the Ultimate Universe they made him Scorpion. He was like Iron Fist rival, and he became Scorpion, part of the Sinister Six. Oh yeah. So I, I maybe that's who you're speaking of, but we'll find out in a couple of moments. Yeah, I'm like looking this stuff up now. Yeah. So as Brave yeah. Dave searches the interwebs, again, I'll just voice my opinion of saying, leave anime alone. Leave it alone. Leave it to the people that know what they're doing, and that's. Japan. Okay. Well, the only... I don't Ooh. know about that. All right. All right. So well, we're, we're get... talking about. Okay. So let's talk about some of the live action adaptions. Oh no, no, no! I'm talking about straight anime. I didn't mention oh, okay. adaption. No, You're no. gonna bring up Gotcha Man. <laughs> there's, there's Gotcha Man. There was the. Um, did they make the wait? Did they make their own Dragon Ball live action movie? I don't know. I know they um, made Attack on Titan. Did, <laughs> wait. Did they make? They made a Gundam wing. I think a they made. One? I think they made a live action in Gundam Wing, which was like. Terrible. Attack on Titan was. It looked like Godzilla. 
Wow. She had the people in the Titan outfits with the the little fake cities, make them look like they're giant. Yeah, they could have just went CGI. Could have went Lord of the Rings style, like we were talking about. Right. It would have been a really quality adaptation for live action. But yeah, hey, you, they're not a country that has so much money to blow on all this shit. That's why they depend on anime. They depend on Dragon Ball in particular because it's hugely popular right. and it's a money maker for them there. And they make the money here with the DVDs, with the T-shirts, the toys, everything, the video games. So popular with the video games. Xenoverse, Xenoverse 2 is coming out. You had Budokai, Tenkaichi. Man, I could go on and on about the different Dragon Ball video games, Naruto video games. We're getting a... A uh, multi-massive online Naruto game that's coming out soon. That's gonna be crazy. I can't wait to see what that's about. Hold on, I found the character. All right, I let's... was talking about uh, Shang Chi. Ah, yeah. and he's very Asian. And what did I say for more to come back? Like Shang, Shang Sun. Yeah. So I wasn't totally wrong. No, like, you're close. I got the Shang part right. It's all right. You know, it's just after we're like, human. Yeah, we're human. We we're we human. do miss our steps. I'm, I'm just a piece well, of we, shit. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. At least you corrected yourself. Yeah. Not about this, just in general. Oh. You know, but I oh. prefer to be called a dirtbag. Well, it's yeah, you know, it's a little less uh, demeaning. Yeah, no yeah, fuck it. But you know, um, <laughs> in terms of like the a lot of the Japanese live action movies, oh, man, a lot of them have been kind of brutal. I'm like, this is yeah, a bad. It's you're not yeah, helping your budget. you're not helping your um, yeah. your case saying right. that don't America shouldn't touch stuff. But look what right. we're doing with it. You know, and America saying, well, we could do way better than you with yeah. it, and well, even if it sucks, we'll still make more money than you. You know who would do a great job with their movies probably is the Koreans. Koreans make great fucking movies, dude. I I am one of the... Okay. <laughs> You're as big as you are into anime. Yeah. I'm really into Korean cinema. Oh, here you go. I fucking love that shit, dude. Like, I got a few things in my uh, DVD collection over there that, you know, you should definitely check out. <laughs> one of my favorite movies is um, A City of Violence. That shit is sick. Sick. City of Violence. Everyone's in, in, in um gateway drug into uh, Korean cinemas. Old boy, hmm. you watch Old Boy. All you're gonna want to do is continue watching Korean films. Really? Yeah, dude, it's sick. Uh, have to check that out. It's uh, you, you have to, man. It's it's awesome. Well, Cor- South Korea. Not the Spike Lee remake. Not that bullshit. I'm talking <laughs> about the original Old Boy, dude. <laughs> dude, that movie's sick, man. Nice. It's sick. But um, all right. So another movie that they're adapting. So. Uh, we didn't talk too much about Akira. I think we initially meant to, but you know, I think that project, as of now, from what I know, has been canceled. All right, that's good. Because <laughs> um, again, I don't think anybody was really looking forward to Zac Efron being the lead. No, it doesn't um, speak of anime to me when you look right. at Zac Efron. You think Zac of Efron. sorority movies and uh, shenanigans with and that bullshit. Those Disney movies that he did. High school oh, that, musical or sing out, whatever. That I don't care called. how many abs he has and how. Clear. I have those same abs. I just got yeah. a layer of fat and kind of covering it for now. And that's what's, that's where the power lies. In the fat? In, in the fucking gut. The, the, the protection, yeah. Protection. So if you got a little extra protection for now, that's all right, okay. man. You don't, No one should body shame nobody, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. You all got to live. You all got to eat. I'm not going to eat fucking grass and Fuck deprive that. my tongue of taste. Dude, we're so all over the fucking place. Anyway, um, that's the great thing, man. <laughs> I know, just but shooting get, the shit. Get, yeah, sh- this, we should call the show "Shooting the Shit." It's it's real. This is real yeah. talk. This is a conversation. This is how people speak. We don't fucking. We're not. I don't. I didn't write a script for me and Dave to talk. No, yeah. we're going by what we're passionate about, what we believe in, and then you know what the next movie we're going to talk about that we really didn't. Not even to mention this, yeah. you know, as an anime, Death, Death Note. Note. Yeah, Death, Death Note, Note is. By far, again, another one. I have a lot of favorites. I can go on probably for like a day listing my favorites. I instantly fell in love with that anime and the I, manga. I crushed your dream when I told you that they were adapting it. I they know. Were, the Japanese already adapted it themselves. And they did a great action. They did a great job. But now the they Americans did. are doing it. It's going to be released on Netflix. I don't know if it's going to be a series or like a one-off uh, film. I, and, when you t- I, and I don't know if I had my head under a rock or somewhere buried in the sand. I didn't know that this was happening. Listen. Because I, I don't know why they even need to do it. Right. Well, but that's another story. And I don't really know much about Death Note. I mean, obviously, you know everything about it. Yeah. Uh, I do know that a lot of it is tied, again, to like Japanese culture, right? It, in terms of like the more mystical stuff, no, it, the names mostly. It's again, it could be he's a 
Light is the main character. He's mm-hmm. a Japanese high school student, mm-hmm. and he's a, he's on you know genius intellect level. Right. He's very smart. They in one of the episodes they show you that he speaks fluent English because mm-hmm. they're teaching English in high school in Japan. Yeah. So. The most influences of, of Japan are going to be the names, mm-hmm. and it's going to be of the culture around. Because they obviously in Japan, Tokyo, they mention the names of the cities. Yeah. So you have that. That's your Japan culture. Your influence besides the names and and he does look somewhat Asian. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. The, the, the lead character. Yes, he, he looks kind of white to me. His he's more of he has more of an Asian look in my eyes. He doesn't have the fully big eyes. He's this is a more grounded show, a more dark show, a more it it just ties into the roots more. I feel it's it's great, and it's just about this Shinigami, which is a death god that he's got bored in his his world, so he decided, you know what, I'm gonna have some fun. I have an extra death note, which is a book that the Shinigami used to write people's names in to kill them. That's how people die in, in Death Note's world. Right. They he can write if you just write the name within I believe forty two seconds or something like that, correct me if I'm wrong, people, uh, they're gonna die of a heart attack. You could be very specific. You can control people with the death note and as light goes on his journey as Kira, you can see how he can write specific things, times, dates and what actions they do up until their death and he can program it like if he was a magician so and whoever holds a death note can see the shinigami yeah and then there's other thing the shinigami can bargain giving you the shinigami eyes for half of your life expectancy so well how much years you have left Mm -hmm. you bargain half of that and you can get to see other people's life expectancy you can see and you know if someone else has a death note because you can't see that over their head it's like it's like walking through a multiplayer online game when you have the Shinigami eyes. You can see everybody's life expectancy and shit like that. It's a great story. It's very, I would say it's kind of like a Batman and Joker type of thing when L is introduced, the world's greatest detective, trying to find out who Kira is. And they're actually working side by side and he knows Light's the villain the whole along. And it's just them outplaying each other. Who's a step ahead? Who's two steps ahead? It's it's just so how can I say it just wraps you up and you got I'm so sad it was such a short fucking run because I could see that could have went on a little bit more especially after introducing other characters but at times it looked like it was the story was getting played so it it had to end but it was good during its time and when Japan did their own movies I watched them they were good. It's so much you can expect from that kind of an anime to be put into a movie. It's followed the source. You had the Shinigamis done in CGI. It made sense. The characters that... The actors that played the characters were Asian. They looked similar to the role. It worked. So now when I found this shit out where you're going to have an American adaptation of it and they're only going to keep this... this was it the ending of the story relevant or something like that? The nature of the story that's only going to be. I get yeah. I so mean, it's, it's, it, to me, that's saying that they're going to change fucking everything yeah. and just have like the main moral of the story is you should not play God because you know what comes around goes around. Ryuk, which is the Shinigami that dropped the book that Light took, told him you know it's going to be me who writes your name in my fucking death note, and that's how that shit ended. And he always told him that. And when the time came, when everyone found out that Light was Kira all along, sorry to spoil it, but it's a very short show. No spoilers. It's too bad. You can still watch it. It's still good. Bad ambassador. Bad. I'm not a bad ambassador. I'm just passionate about the show, and Mm -hmm. I have to explain it because people that know of it are going to be just as pissed off as I am because this shit is very... It shouldn't be touched by American hands. I know. I know nothing about Death Note. Um, it's something I do want to check out. Uh, you should. It's about. It's. It's about what? How many episodes? About twenty-seven, I think. That's not bad. That's about the same as the Dragon. I mean, uh, not Dragon Ball. Um, no. Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. So right? it's, it's very, very short. short. All right. The ending. Some of the things are very different. Is an instance in the anime where, before L dies, he's washing the feet of 
light, so it's kind of like Jesus and the Messiah, you know, the disciples rather, I'm sorry, the yeah. apostles. It's kind of like, you know, Jesus is about to die, so he's yeah. washing the feet and shit. It was very, it had religious instances, it had very much political. It's it, very I, well rounded story. It man. was, yeah, exactly. You took well, the words right out of my stomach. I'm going to try to watch a few episodes of Death Note before our next show. Um, I can't really. Beyond that, I can't really comment on anything. Um, I I will say that... Okay, so Adam Wingard is the director of this film. Um, I'm actually an Adam Wingard fan. Um, I thought he did a pretty decent job with the horror film You're Next. And I love his movie, uh, The Guest. Uh, I think he's a very talented director. Um, I do think that... Here's the thing. Hollywood has already decided that they're gonna that they're going to make this movie, right? Yeah. Um, the best that we could hope for is that they do a good job, at least, right? Because what you don't want is another like Dragon Ball situation. Yeah. So I, I where mean, it's just like complete bullshit. Yeah. I, I think he will Adam Wigard will be able to deliver us a, a very interesting story. I do agree with you that it's probably going to be maybe sixty percent. From the source material, the rest they're gonna have to make changes because, well, all right, this is you know, in America. It's not gonna work. It, it's well, I mean, they we can, gotta wait and see. They, I mean, but again, I, they can, I'm talking this, from the perspective of someone who doesn't really tune them. Yeah, I don't know much about the, the material, way, so the way I only I, go by what you're. The working. way I can see it working is that yeah. they still call it Death Note. Yeah, but they're gonna have the guy's name. It's gonna be Light. It can't have a Japanese last name. Yeah, L is L. That works. And whoever has a Japanese name that's not yeah. going to be played by a Japanese person, yeah. you're going to have to change it. Right. Those changes, I can see to make it work, but don't change the story. Right. Like, we're in 2016. That's going to come out in 2017. We have the, the money. We have the technology. We can make this a really good adaptation. His name is going to be Light Turner. All right. So they changed the name. Yeah. So, but they kept Light. See, yeah. I, can, I can agree with that. Me, Mia. Is there a Mia in the story? Yeah. Mia Sutton. Okay. Um, police Captain Russell. All right, so they're changing all the. So the, yeah, I didn't even know that, and I'm saying, and see, so already, okay, they're on the right path. Because if you're gonna call it Death Note, you're gonna keep the logo and everything the same. You're gonna have. It doesn't mention anything of Ryuk, the Death God. Do you want to read the like the, the plot details? Uh, just go all to right. storyline right there. All right, there. so. The, the plot summary, it says, Light, a bright student who stumbles across a mystical notebook that has power to kill any person whose name he writes in it. Light decides to launch a secret crusade to rear the streets of criminals, which is true. That's what happened. Soon, the student turned vigilante finds himself pursued by a famous detective only known by the alias L, written by one of Brothers Pictures. <laughs> so, what this writing here is what the element of the story is. So, I'm happy that they have L. They're using light. I'm happy about that. And is there like more? Let's see. It's, it's trivia. Let me see something. There have already been five Japanese adaptations. as part of the trivia there. I I only knew of two. I knew Death Note and Death Note Two. But seeing how they're Americanizing the last names, I can deal with that. And I'm sure. Many of you can, as long as they keep the first names, because that gives us our, our comparison. That is more over here. Okay. Like with, uh... All right. With the Death Note in hand, he goes on a personal crusade and moves to kill all evil in the world to become God, Kira. He does all this in his new name, Kira, and declares himself the law and justice of the world, which is true. But I don't know if they're just reading this from you know the Japanese right, version right, right. Yeah. or that this is what they're actually going to have this movie about. At first, things go as he planned as he moves towards making a better world. However, things don't go as he had anticipated as the relentless L works to track him down and arrest him. Well, yeah, that happens. That happens. So so I mean, I'm, I'm very curious to see if that's what they're actually going to do yeah. or they're just reading what Death Note... So, well, we, so usually, who the ones that are familiar know what, what it's about. Usually that's... That'll be kind of put out by like... Uh, that'll be part of like the, the press kit. So that might be the official like plot details. I hope so because then then I can say now I'm intrigued. All right, so let me okay, so let me ask you a question, 
right. so this is cool with as we're developing things as we're doing the show this is fucking great right because we're, we're not prepared people like, it has nothing to do with we're, we're real so this is real. cool we're unraveling shit really not as, prepared i love it that's what we do no it's, it's this great is, this is real talk man it's real talk as the rappers say oh uh, anyway yeah uh okay so let's say okay so this movie's already in production yeah adam wingard is directing it um I actually showed you a thing last week. Uh, yeah. Some of the, the set the photos production stills. Like, I guess that girl's Mia. Maybe and she's, she's naked. Yeah. Like we're gonna introduce nudity in here, sex cells, I guess. I'm always ready to buy. Um, so hey, let's long, say as long they, as she looks yeah. good, you know. But that's what counts. <laughs> hey. All right, so let's say they, they they have a diverse cast. We know who the director is. Let's say they actually put together a pretty good movie for a fan of this property. Is that all you need to be satisfied? If they do a really good job, yeah, and the, blows my the, socks off. The, despite the fact that it's not in, set in Japan, it's not with Japanese actors. No, that'd be fine. Now, I have the same question about Ghost in the Shell. What if it turns out to be a really good movie? Slightly different from what you know from the from the from the animated movie. But like, what if it turns out to just be a good movie? Is that enough for you it, as a fan? It all, it all comes down to how are they gonna name the characters. Like, see, their first names, like in the characters, are not really Asian. Right. Light, Mia, L is just a letter. Right. They're changing the last names to keep it relevant. Right. Where, you know, and what part of the hemisphere we're in, shit makes sense. They're keeping the plot, the story, the same definitely could deal with that if they make this they knock this out of the park it's going to be something for people that don't really know anime they can yeah. get into it like wow yeah. i want to go watch that anime if that does that for the industry i'm more i'm all for it and that's great because then that's going to help bring awareness and like this was a japanese anime right. there was a manga which is a comic go and see the original see this see what made this movie happen in America, I, I do feel that Death Note will probably be a better adaption than um, Ghost in the Shell. I say that because I feel like with Ghost in the Shell, we kind of know what we're going to expect in terms of action. I don't think they're going to present anything that new, that different. Um, I think it. I think to them, the appeal is really about having Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, um, it's just gonna be like having Black Widow with a different hairstyle. Right. It's, by, it's yeah. just gonna be that choreographed fighting and yeah. whatever right. plot line it's gonna be. We're gonna see a lot, a lot of cool ninja sequences. Yeah, the, you know what I mean, and by ninja I mean like in terms of like martial arts that kind of and stuff. And it's and that's not what Ghost in the Shell is about. Right. It's all about robots, cyborgs, right. androids, the internet, right. political, you know, espionage. Shit like that. Right. Just that, like, you know, even with Akira, I mean, the the uh, the the social politics was a huge part aspect of that of that movie. Yeah. You know? Um, but I do feel like with Death Note, they're gonna have a, a better opportunity because with Death Note, they don't have to make this into a spectacle. Again, this is something that's gonna be on no, Netflix. This I is, think they're gonna focus more on the characters. It's not that kind of a show. It's right. it's very low key. It's this is a dude that's killing people using a notebook. Right. And he could uh, he can do things just by writing a name. They die of a heart attack. You could do have someone get hit by a bus. You can have someone jump off a building, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Having someone kill someone and then shoot themselves. It's that's what it's about. It does you don't have big explosions. It's not gonna be a Michael Bay production right. where you got these it's not going to need a big production value or budget. It's just... And I'm tired of that shit anyway. Yeah, you just... Like, again, we go back to Daredevil. Brilliantly done. Nothing, you know, over the top. It's just good storytelling, good right. character development. You could do that with this. If you if whatever I read is true, and then I can certainly get behind this, and hopefully when it comes out, I hope that it does well for bringing awareness to the industry that... This was adapted from a Japanese manga right. and American studio, American director knocked the shit out of the park. Right. And that's going to help America with its credibility for buying Japanese properties and doing it in a fucking profound way. And I hope everyone enjoyed our conversation. I know... Leave us feedback. I mean, let us know yeah, what you guys think. 
let us know how important it is to you f to to maintain those Japanese roots. If the film is good, will you still support it? Or yeah. are you just going to be biased against it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, um, we'll, so. we have to see when it comes out. Yeah. You know, definitely, if you listen to us on SoundCloud or iTunes, you definitely can leave comments and feedback on Facebook. You can just go to Facebook.com slash I am Matt Swagger. We can even go to our Rogues Gallery page. Which, you know, we're all related. This is a Rogues Gallery you know, show as well. This is just a, a, an audio version for anime and manga. So definitely... Reach out to us. We'd love to know your opinions again. And let's see on the next episode if Dave watches what I told him to watch. <laughs> let's find out on the next episode of the Anime Aspect. Again for Brave Dave, I'm Matt Swagger. Thanks so much for sticking with us. Until next time. <laughs>